welcome to another session on design of machine elements today we will see the design of worm gears worm gears are used for transmitting power at high velocity ratios take this question here we have to design a speed reducer unit to transmit power equal to 1 kilowatts transmission ratio is 27 worm is made of hardened steel and rotates at 1440 rpm and worm is denoted by suffix 1 gear is made of phosphor bronze gear is denoted by suffix 2 they are of 20 degree involute teeth have 20 degree involute and center to center distance is 100 m so we'll see how we'll design the gear here it is given that worm is made of hardened steel first we'll design the gear gear is made of phosphor bronze from page 234 table 12.7 we can select from this table they say phosphor bronze given here for which the strength is 82.4 and its Brunner hardness number is 100 bh we'll take this material so gear has a static stress sigma d2 equal to 82.4 newton per mm square and it has a bhn value equal to 100 now we'll see what are the module diameter and number of teeth for the worm and the gear just we have said worm is denoted by 1 and gear is denoted by suffix 2 it is given speed ratio equal to n1 by n2 and n1 is given as 1440 rpm substituting in the equation i can write n2 equal to n1 by 27 equal to 1440 by 27 you get that value equal to 53.33 rpm after finding n1 and n2 we can find the diameters of the worm and the gear from the data book there is an equation in page 223 equation 12.51 a d1 equal to this is our equation d1 equal to a raised to 0.875 by 1.466 where a denotes the center to center distance center to center distance and this question it is given as a equal to 100 mm so substituting that value I can write d1 equal to a that is 100 raised to 0.875 divided by 1.466 equal to 38.36 mm after finding d1 we can find d2 from center to center distance because in this figure I can see that I can say that Center center distance will be sum of the radius. It will be sum of the radius R1 plus R2. Or in terms of diameter, I can write center center distance equal to D1 plus D2 by 2, and which value is given as 100 mm. From which I can find the value of D2, D2 equal to 161.64 mm. So I got the value of D1 and D2. Now we'll see what are the other dimensions. For the worm, worm is essentially like a screw. It has the lead, axial pitch, and the lead angle. We have already found the value of D1, D1 equal to 38.36. Now we have to find the lead and the lead angle. Now, in order to find the lead angle, I have these two equations see this triangle the worm is essentially like a screw so if we unwound one pitch length we can get a triangle in which tan gamma will be equal to lead by pi d1 which is given in equation 12.46 e so tan gamma equal to l by pi d1 here we have two unknowns gamma is unknown and l is also unknown Substituting the second equation, that is equation 12.48c, 
here d2 is known velocity ratio i is also known that is 27 from this equation 12.48 c i can write so we have got the value of d1 equal to 38.36 i am rewriting those values d2 equal to 161.64 mm from equation 12.48 c that is this equation velocity ratio equal to i equal to 27 equal to pi d2 by l substituting d2 equal to 161.64 i will get lead equal to l equal to 18.81 mm so we have got the lead after finding the lead i can substitute that lead in the previous equation equation 12.46 e see this equation we have got the value of l equal to 18.84 18.81 and d1 equal to 38.36 i can get the value of gamma which is called the lead angle and substituting in that equation i'll get gamma equal to lead angle gamma equal to 8.87 degrees so we have all the found the, all the dimensions of the worm now we need to find the value of z1 and z2 in worm z1 denotes the number of start of the thread so for worm there is a worm data given in page 244 table 12.28 b table 12.28 b for velocity ratio over 20 we have to use single start thread or z1 equal to 1 so our velocity ratio i equal to 27 which is greater than 20 so take z1 equal to 1 if it is double start it is called double start thread in such case z1 will be equal to 2 and it goes like that after finding z1 we can find the value of z2 because i equal to i equal to z2 by z1 z1 equal to 1 z2 equal to i into z1 so z2 will be equal to 27 further we have found the already we have found the value of one c dimensions of the gear d2 equal to 161.64 mm module can be found from d m equal to d2 by z2 so m equal to module m equal to d2 by z2 will be equal to 161.64 divided by 27 is equal to 6 m if you are getting a decimal points make it as a next whole number take it as 6 m after finding m module we can also find the circular pitch circular pitch equal to 6 pi m 6 pi m further we can find the dimensions of the we have all found, already found the dimensions of the gear now we can check the transition strength transition strength equal to sigma d c v b y m for the gear i know the value of sigma d sigma d equal to, which is made of fossil bonds sigma d equal to 82.4 82.4 newton per mm square then c v can be obtained from this equation equation 12.53 c here we have two equations first equation is for non metallic gears without considering dynamic effect and second one is for 6.1 by 6.1 for one plus v which is for metallic gears considering dynamic load so we normally we design metallic gears for me so we take this equation cv equal to 6 by 6 plus v for all our equations or our problems so i can write c 
CV equal to 6.1 by 6.1 plus V where velocity V equal to pi d2 n2 by 60 equal to pi into d2 161.64 into 53.33 divided by 60 we had to convert into meters so divided by 1000 you will get that value is 0 0.451 meters per second so substituting this velocity equal to 0 0.451 i will get the value of cv cv equal to 0 0.9311 so we have got the value of sigma d cv next one is b phase width b i can i have the equation for b b equal to a raised to 0 0.875 by 2 you have remember a is the center center distance so b equal to 100 raised to 0 0.875 whole divided by 2 that value will be equal to 28. 1 to mm. Now we have to find y capital Y equal to pi y capital Y equal to pi y where small y is the Lewis form factor for 20 degree involute my equation is 0 0.154 minus 0 0.912 by z I will take that equation so y equal to 0.154 minus 0 0.912 by z we are designing the gear so z2 z2 equal to 27 substituting that value i will get y equal to 0 0.12 so capital y equal to pi into 0 0.12 now module module equal to m equal to d2 by z2 m equal to m equal to d by z m equal to d2 by z2 so d2 was 161.64 divided by module 27 equal to 6 mm substituting all these values i will get the value of ft ft you will get that value equal to 4880 newton then after finding tangential velocity we can find the power transmitted using this tangential load i will get the power transmitted equal to 2.2 kilowatts so after substituting these dimensions we it can transmit up to 1 kilowatts it can transmit up to 2.2 kilowatts which is greater than which is greater than the required value the required value is only 1 kilowatts so our design is safe based on based on tangential load point of view tangential load point of view point of view further i can check whether it will withstand or whether it can transmit that much power under dynamic load so dynamic strength of the gear f is equal to sigma d b y m where sigma d equal to 82.4 B is the phase width 28.12 mm. Capital Y equal to pi y pi into y value is 0 0.12 and module m equal to 6 mm. Substituting these values, I will get Fs equal to I can get Fs equal to 5241 newton and using these dimensions it has a dynamic strength of 5241 newton so the power transmitted will be equal to 2.36 kilowatts but we need to transmit only one kilowatts so it is safe it is safe under dynamic dynamic strength point of view further i can check with wear load also wear load equal to d2 bk where 
d2 is known d2 equal to 161.64 mm b equal to face width 28.12 mm then k can be obtained from table 12.30 from table 12.30 page 246 so we can go to that table here we have a number of values our gamma was equal to 8.86 degrees so it is in between 0 to 10 so I have to select this first column in which our material was hardened steel and fossil bronze so this is our value for kk equal to 0.549 so taking this value to the equation of fw k equal to 0.549 again get fw will be equal to 2499 newton and the power transmitted by applying this wear load fw you into velocity 0.451 velocity was equal to 0.451 equal to 1.13 kilowatts which is also greater than required power required power of 1 kilowatts so this design is safe under wear load point of view so this completes our design of worm gears thank you for listening